Hi, this is Dr. Pam Wiltzius. I am talking to Tripods from River Road Animal Hospital in Puyallup, Washington. I just wanted to talk a little bit about seromas. A seroma is an abnormal accumulation of fluid, and the fluid will end up looking like a clear to light pink clear fluid, meaning that there's no cloudiness to it. If you have an abscess or an infection, that fluid tends to be a thicker, almost think of like looking like a tomato soup based milky fluid and it smells. The other type of fluid you can sometimes see is true bleeding where there's a blood vessel that's left untied or where the ligature has come off and that is actually a darker red even to a purplish color and it's obviously blood and if it's dripping faster than a drop per second is usually where I say that you might need to go in there and do something more about it. Some of the slow bleeding things can be handled by just a pressure bandage base, and that would be okay. So as far as prevention, the best thing is to keep them quiet, keep them wrapped, and if there's any sign of fluid buildup or swelling, to take them to the vet quickly because then they can be drained and often you don't have all the tissue falling apart. Worst case scenario, you have to have a second surgery to go in there and either stop some bleeders that are bleeding or to kind of get out all the diseased tissue if there's been a seroma that's kind of uh, been space occupying where it kind of destroys the tissue around it. With phantom pain, because we've amputated the limb, uh, the nerve can sometimes still sense that the, the limb is still there. So what you can find is that sometimes the dogs will look funny, like they're looking to see where their leg is or they're moving what's left of their arm, uh, trying to move the leg out of the way. More commonly, you can actually hear these sharp shrill shrieks out of the blue because all of a sudden they'll get a twinge of pain from the nerve that's been cut in half. Sometimes there's a muscle left behind that will move a little bit that you can see it. Sometimes the dog might just have shaking and panting and that can be a sign of, of just general pain even with phantom pain. So it's really not normal to have that. It can be a, a normal complication I should say but it, they shouldn't have to suffer with that. So there, are, there is some medication you can get for it. Uh, you can try hot packs and cold packs which can help with just generalized inflammation and swelling although if it's truly phantom pain the nerve either has to just kind of get over it, so to say, where just time makes it better, or the drug gabapentin is about the only other thing I've had. Phantom pain, we have found that if you give them a drug called gabapentin, starting just one day before amputation and continuing that for a week, most of those dogs will not have phantom pain. If your dog did not have gabapentin ahead of time and develops phantom pain, you can actually still put them on the gabapentin after that. There's a pretty big dosage range and your vet may or may not have that medication, but it's a human drug so it can be scripted out to the human pharmacy. And most dogs end up taking it two to three times a day for best results. The third, the third complication is the, the least common, fortunately. That is where we have some sort of anesthetic problem. Um, most of the time we'll see animals uh, having that issue if they've had bone cancer for a while and then what can happen is when we do the surgery they can throw a blood clot is what I think happens to those guys where they either just don't wake up on the table or they maybe have difficulty walking afterwards if the clot went somewhere else. That's really rare. We don't see that too often. It can only be diagnosed by an MRI sort of thing.